Climate scientists say more research is needed to understand how Australia's weather events are tied to global warming. Floods have become a new normal for Australia's most populous state. And for more on this, we're joined by Professor Jamie Pittock from the Fenner School of Environment and Society at the Australian National University. Professor, thanks for joining us this morning. Firstly, Australia's southeast coast has been battered by major flooding four times in the past 18 months. Are you concerned that this could be the new normal? Yes, it's a great concern that climate change uh, may be increasing the, the frequency and intensity of these uh, La Nina rainfall events uh, and increasing, uh, increasing flooding. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done in this country uh, to better prepare uh, to reduce the flood risk and manage disasters. Professor, critics have said the last decade was wasted, uh, that under the coalition, not enough was done to prepare for climate disasters. And now hopes are being pinned on the Albanese administration. Uh, do you think this new leadership will push more aggressive action and change climate politics in Australia? Yes, uh, I'm hopeful that the incoming uh, Labor national government will do a lot more to uh, reduce uh, climate change pollution. Uh, they have already uh, upgraded Australia's commitment and in the international processes uh, to reduce emissions by 43%, up from the previous government's 28%. When it comes to climate change adaptation, uh, the incoming national government has committed to doing more, but it's very unclear uh, as to what exactly uh, they would do as yet. Of course, Australia is a federation and it's the state governments that have primary responsibility uh, for many of the measures that would be required for climate change adaptation, such as managing flood risk. And the New South Wales government has been amongst the worst performers among the states in terms of uh, taking uh, planned action to reduce the danger of the sort of flooding we're seeing today. And how much would you say the blame is, is down as well to perhaps urban planning, for example? Uh, Sydney's rapid population growth over the last few decades has seen uh, development sort of push out into floodplain areas. I think a substantial portion of the blame uh, lies with state and local governments who have uh, approved uh, developments in harm's way on the floodplains. This isn't a new problem. Uh, the colonial government of Governor Macquarie in 1817 was the first to describe the problem. Uh, sadly, New South Wales governments have been influenced by the interests of property developers uh, and have enabled development in dangerous places. But sadly, that means that we now have to take some fairly drastic action and, in my view, uh, should be buying out the most flood-prone homes and businesses uh, to relocate people to safe.